principal, Dr. Father John P.J. Sheena Ma'am, Head of Department, Bachelor of Education, with a strong team of teachers at Bhopal School of Social Sciences. And my dear friends from the virtual world, we welcome you all. Let us all welcome Dr. Surekha Ramachandran, who is our guide for today, but inspiration for life. Dr. Surekha Ramachandran is the president of Down Syndrome Federation of India. And we would also like to welcome Brenda from MAM's office for being an enabler for this session. It is said the base of every strong business system, process, and even a relationship is a strong value system. And the key to any value is to give value, to value others. And when it comes to disability, the value we can offer is inclusivity. We at Bhopal School of Social Sciences, under the guidance of our respected principal, Dr. Father John P.J., have a committee for students with disability who strongly believe in an all-inclusive environment, starting from infrastructure to instructional curriculum and all the learning mode required for the e-learning. I would also like to thank Mr. Gaurav Atri, who is the face behind this digital cell, the disability cell, with a strong team behind him. Now, sharing the same belief system, we have Rekha Ma. Friends, if you don't know, I mean, she might be Dr. Surekha Ramachandran for Google, but for all of us here, she's our Rekha Ma. She is contributing her valuable learning for the last 35 years. She is a real inspiration, everyone. Now, respecting her time, I would like to invite Rekha Ma to enlighten us all and empower us in becoming better teachers, better humans, and sources so that we can also empower at least a few to begin with. And before we begin anything and everything here, I just want one commitment from all. One commitment from all. It is 11.03 here. We are not going to drop out of this session till 12.30. I repeat, the only commitment required is next 90 minutes of your life. And in case you drop out, tomorrow in your life, if you host any session, your audience will also drop out. It's a karma. It comes back. Okay? So just be here and value people here. You are going to learn a lot out of here. Ma'am, over to you. Please come over and enlighten us. Ma'am, you aren't audible. Yeah. Okay. Can I, am I audible? Loud and clear. Good morning, friends. Listen, the next Good 90 morning. minutes are going to be so exciting that I don't think you guys are wanting to get off this. Okay. I'm going to make sure that you're so warm and so into this that you're not going to get out. Uh, I'm not sitting here as the president of the association. I'm not sitting here as a chairperson. I have come here to actually involve you into our lives. This is a real life story which took off. Uh, Nishu said 35, it's 40 years now. So time passes so quickly. We don't even know how quickly the time went through. But these 40 years have been enriching. And honestly, I will be showing you slides, but I don't want you to be concentrating on the slides or reading the slides because that is not what I want you to do. I want you to listen to my voice because my voice will tell you what it means to be in a situation where you have a person with any challenges in your family. So I am going to help you to also overcome all those things that you might come in face to face with in your lives. Now, it's a very exciting life. In 1981, uh, my daughter, Bubbly, was born with... Uh, Brinda, are you there? Brinda? Is Brinda there? Brinda? 
Yes, ma'am, I'm there. Can you see my screen? We my see screen. The screen. You were able to see the screen? No. Yes, please. Yes, ma'am. I I'm just going there again. So this is not the story of someone else. Okay. This is a life story that started 40 years ago. Now, is the screen I'm visible, ma'am? Sorry. Yeah. So please make it large screen. Yeah. Done, ma'am. No, it hasn't turned large. Sorry, it is. Uh, it's not a full screen. Oh, we still see the slides, okay? Ma'am, for me it shows full screen. Uh, Sheena, can you? Nishu, can you see a full screen? Um, Brinda, we can't see any content. There's just your thumbnail visible. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Uh, One second. No, because I was. I'm able to see the whole screen. I've given it as a slideshow. But earlier, earlier it was visible. Now? No. Can, can no. you see it? No. So, I want to take you back to 1981. And uh, that was a time when I think the medical world was like a mystery. And especially when it came to people having some type of, um, you know, any, any challenge, any challenge. It wasn't uh, people with... Uh, uh, a particular disability, it was any challenge, I think the medical world themselves were quite puzzled. In that particular year, uh, my daughter entered the world and it was like, a, like a, the biggest shocker of the universe when you have 12 pediatricians walking into your room trying to do a study on a little baby who's just come into the universe and people are looking at it and trying to make it into a science material. And I'm thinking to myself, I think she looks the most gorgeous little baby to every mother. I think her baby, however she is, is like a little flower that has entered the world. It has taken me months to be waiting for this little baby to come into the world. And yes, I thought maybe, you know, they were just in the hospital, so they had visited. And then we find that uh, these doctors, 40 years ago, let me tell you that I have not seen many attitudes change. People still talk about them as people with, you know, children with disabilities. My daughter was called a Mongol child. That is how they called them in those days. Mongol was a very, very sharp word. But the word was Mongol because it came from a race. It was like they had the features that depicted a mongoloid person and to me I, it didn't make a difference to me what they were talking about i continued nursing my baby and yes you know the only time that i felt hurt was because they were talking about institutional care you know that 40 years ago they were actually taking away babies and putting them in institutions because people themselves but having limited information. Well, I just want to take you that even life-saving performances were not happening. They were not saving our children because they were born with any type of a disability like a heart issue or any issue. They would not take it seriously. They were not giving them a chance to survive. So we lost many, many, many babies. In fact, in the same hospital that I was, I had a father and doctor conspiring on how they were going to get a person with spina bifida. Spina bifida is another type of a disability which happens like a hump on the back. So they were planning on how to actually put this baby to sleep. Now, I overheard it and it was like a shocker to me. Are they really talking about termination of a baby? Yes. That was happening and this was in front of me. I just want to tell you a little bit about Down syndrome before we go into this entire story and you ask me questions. Down syndrome, my friends, is a genetic disorder. It is not something that happens after the birth of the baby or in the first trimester. It happens at the time of conception. The baby, the minute there is a conception, the baby is already created. This baby is already termed Down syndrome. 
So it has come into the world with an extra chromosome and these chromosomes carry the parameters of all your genetic features. Everything that we have is stuck into our chromosomes. If you look at it, all of us are born with 46 chromosomes in every cell. So your entire body is made up of cells. In those cells, you will have 46 chromosomes, 23 from your mother, 23 from your father. Unfortunately or fortunately, from my side it's fortunately, this particular chromosome, one extra chromosome, we don't know where it came from, how it came, but actually it comes and gets itself stuck onto the 21st pair. So they are called trisomy 21s. This 21st pair creates the confusion both in the mind and the body of the particular person. So, yes, there will be a million issues with this particular person, which over a period of time we have thrashed out and we have made it simpler for parents. There is a simple test after the baby is born, which is called the karyotyping. A karyotyping is when you take the blood from the baby and you take a test, which is called the karyotyping, to decipher what is the aberration and where is the extra chromosome. Now, Parents keep asking me, can you find out who is the contributor? There are no contributors. We don't even want to get into it. It is a baby and the baby has an extra chromosome. This baby is called a Down syndrome little one. We don't even call them Down syndrome children. We call them children with Down syndrome because it's like an insult when you say Down syndrome child or Down syndrome kid or a Down syndrome adult. They have a name. So it's Bubbly has Down syndrome. By the way, Bubbly is my daughter's name because she was born and it was within 10 minutes we had to start taking her in for surgeries. We'll come to that a little later. What is it that identifies a person with Down syndrome? Very simple. Uh, one second. Brinda, have you got the slides? Yes, ma'am. It's on. Oh, why is it? I don't see it. Ma'am, can the others see it? Nishu, can you see it? Are my slides visible? No, 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 no they are not, they are not, not visible at all. No. Uh, is there any uh, uh, way you have to give me permission or something, Vishu? Ma'am, you have I, to share your screen. You have to show your screen, yeah, Kirith. I have been showing my screen, but uh, since then I've been showing and I've been like the presentation, I've been running. Uh, Kirith, can you help us with this if we email that to you? Shall we shall oh, yes, I email it to you? Um, yeah, please email yes, it to yeah. Uh, ma'am, I'm emailing it to Mr. Kirat. So Yeah, but but Brinda, they won't know when to change the slides. Yes. Uh, Mr. Kirat, I am trying mm. once again. Uh, sorry for this, but I am I shared the entire screen. Yes, ma'am, sure. Share the screen for clicking it over. Share me or you have to share the entire screen. Yeah, I am sharing the entire screen. Wo share wala option click nahi ho hai abhi. It came up, Brinda. It came in the beginning. Yeah, it, it uh... Yeah, I shared that window and I am here. Can you all see it? No. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. It's visible. No. Yeah, you can see, we can it? see it now. It's there. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. So, thank God because I just wanted you to get it's not the rest of the story, but this is important because you won't be able to identify. Can you go back, Brinda, and take it through those uh, few slides that we have missed out? So, yes, sure. yes, stop, no, no, just stop with that, Brinda. Uh, this is the karyotyping, and this is what it looks like after the test is done. And when we are given the report, it will look like this. So many, many people think, you know, oh my God, what are these, with these little markers? They're not markers. They are the chromosomes in your cells, which carry all your genetic details. So, I'm not going to go into too much on this particular issue, but I will tell you how you can identify a person with Down syndrome. So, the next one shows you that though people will tell you most people with Down syndrome look alike, sorry, they might look alike, but they carry their parents' genetic material. So, each one is different from the other. No two children will have the same characteristics just like you and me. So, they are different. Now, when we come to their typical features, you will find uh, they will have 
very, very underdeveloped noses. They have a very Asiatic face. That is why they were called Mongols. They have a smaller gait than others. They will also walk differently, so you can actually find out because this is because of the hypotonia. In fact, when my daughter was born, if you held her up, she would just look like a rag doll. She would flop. So there was a lot of floppiness in the body. Of course, we never realized all these things. They might also have short sightedness. There are a lot of issues in this. And normally, these are the things that we look for when a person looks at a baby with Down syndrome. And these are the typical features. So at birth, day one, my friends, we can find out that this is a baby with Down syndrome. With the experience that we have now, the, par the parents just call us in and immediately we know it is a baby with Down syndrome. Now, the, the most important thing here is that my baby's journey, and I start with my daughter, okay? So I don't want to get into anybody else's life because it was a series of issues that I would like to explain to you. So you might find a person who has one or two of these issues. Bubbly's health issues were multiple and every attitude of the doctor was so negative. She, they only said one thing, put her into an institution, go home and have more babies. Like that was a solution. My, my point is we are parents and it is our baby. So I don't think any parent, any parent would want to give away her baby. After all, it is mine. They label them. They would say words like waste. And you know where I was directed? It was the biggest shocker of my life. I was sent to this government hospital. It was the most dilapidated looking place. Now, this was in the 80s. The next one was even worse. There was a general war for children with disabilities. Every type of disability was put into a room and they called it the Department of Psychology. Like they were dealing with children with mental illness. It was again and again for me, like, where have I come? Why are they directing us to a place like this? And parents around them were sitting and looking at me. They had no clue what we were all doing there. There was no assistance and there was no professional help. No one would tell us what to do. We were sitting around and there were just some toys thrown to us and they would call us, you know, words like in Hindi, Pagal hai, aisa bachcha paida ko hua hai, things like that. So it, it was like, not only was it disappointing, it was like something that a parent would not be able to handle. Next, Binda. It was a time of the bleakest, bleakest time in the history of any disability. The 1980s to the 1990s were people who were lost. We were aimlessly looking for support, help, trying to talk to people. No one wanted to associate with us. I went into a zillion homes where people would tell us they have a child with Down syndrome. They might give you help. If you went there, they wouldn't open the door. No one wanted to talk to us because then the neighborhood would come to know about it. And that was so frightening for us that no one wanted to associate it with us. And I am a very questioning person, by the way. I won't take just this, not, have, not possible, it would not be done. Yes, considering the, that the world was most beautifully connected and people were better informed, Brinda, uh, better informed, it was somewhat amazing for me that there was still this mystery, myth and misunderstanding. There was so much misunderstanding on the subject. It was, and this was more so true of a country like India. You know, wherever I have traveled in India, I have had people ca calling it a curse. This is your karma, this is your sins. And that was something that hit us very badly. And most of the time, the women were blamed. I myself, for one, can give you an example of my mother-in-law saying, this is your karma, you brought it into the family. More importantly was the attitude of the parents. The parents were so clueless. They were frightened. They were worried of blame and shame. They did not know how to deal with that initially. And I was carrying that same thing in my shoulders because I thought maybe I was responsible in some way. Yes, the doctor. Ma'am, you're not audible. We're not being very happy. They are just not to handle our children. Huh? Yeah, better, ma'am. 
tendency to decry an individual's life is the worst thing that I can have tried to change over the last 40 years. No one, no one has a right to decry another individual. If you don't know, move away. But do not label children, call them words, which sticks in our mind and it is difficult to erase. I keep telling everybody, do not let the pediatrician frighten you. But I Ah, Fortunately, if someone sees my baby, yeah. Hello, ma'am. The first baby, yes. You're breaking. No, no, she's here. Listen, Nishu is saying it's okay. Okay. The love and care that a mother or a father extends to his child is ours. I don't think a doctor will ever understand that because it is not his child. So I don't want them as experts to be guiding us on an issue that they don't know. So we also have learned that there was no awareness. India was completely depleted of any awareness. There was dirt because people did not want to study the subject. And also no intervention was given to our children. Now, Bubbly was sitting in front of me, my daughter, and I'm looking at her and thinking, how do I proceed now? So the first thing I did was get a call from an, uh, a, a doctor overseas who had a son with Down syndrome. And I traveled all the way to Rhode Island. And he told me, he said, your child has tremendous potential. So that gave me hope. And that word, till today, I use it on every child because a mother wants somebody to say, your child is the best. It will do, it can do, it, it will, we will take it there. And you just want that support. You don't want anybody saying something about your child however the child is it is mine and it's an extension of me so first things for all of you whenever you see a baby or you see a mother who looks a little sad just say what a lovely flower oh she looks so beautiful yes we started with that we started with medical intervention with bubble we started with early intervention we did not have therapists so i learned i found out what it was that we had to do with a little baby my friends, 1982 was when the watershed towards a change happened in India. And it happened because of parents, not because of the doctors. It's about parents who took the challenge and said, we will set things right. We will work. A new hope was born in the minds of people. Then we started looking at my own daughter. First, I had to address my own issues. So Bubbly was born with severe bilateral cataract. Both the eyes had cataract. And I think, didn't think that cataract could come to a baby. Normally, it comes to an adult. So we, she went in for surgeries. She had four surgeries in the first year with 122 times of anesthesia. She was born severely hypotonic. Constipation was a very big concern. And she needed enema every day. The Department of Endocrinology did not even exist. Today, day one babies are born, we do the thyroid test because that is the major medical concern for us. But Bubbly was well, tested at 14 when she found that we found that she was hypothyroid. Respiratory issues were a major concern and she had lots and lots of issues. She was actually getting pneumonia very frequently. But again, the doctor said there's no hope. But I just kept her. You should have seen the day that she got pneumonia. I walk into the hospital to take an x-ray and he puts her on a tray and says, she's going to die tomorrow. Take her home. Now, I know, I know this might sound like I was getting aggressive, but a tigress brings out her fangs when somebody says such a horrible thing to them. And I actually slapped him and I said, do not ever do this to anyone else. Because as a parent, if you don't know, how do you know my daughter is going to die? You are not to predict the death of any child. I am the mother. I will care. I will take her home. Yes, my friends, I took her home. And this is what happened after that. Uh, I kept her till about 17, 18. Very, very healthy. Very, very. And suddenly... Bubbly went into depression. She became bipolar. She became uh, like, okay, she was actually schizophrenic. 
and there was hallucinations she could see things so there were a multiple mental health issues you will not believe it that in as early as the 19 uh, i mean 1899 no pediatrician or no psychiatrist was able to identify this because bubbly had down syndrome so they said down syndrome so take her home and this is the way or put her into an institution lock her up because this is the way they will be friends this was my biggest challenge i knew my daughter and i knew that this was a medical issue so i went back to the university i got permission to study the subject and today my book is being released everywhere with psychiatrists who do not understand that people with down syndrome are people first then people with down syndrome so stop undermining the fact that this is a person who needs to be brought back bubbly had came back with a challenge and she is doing so well for herself but it needed for me to educate the medical world look at the number of people in a year 30000 people are born every year in india and we have the largest population of persons with down syndrome if, and i have not been able to touch the tip of the iceberg one in every 800 births is born with down syndrome where are my challenges awareness acceptance and integration we talk about inclusion we talk about integration where is it is it happening are we looking at it are we able to handle it next so what did i do i put on my boots and started attending all pediatric conferences wherever they were being held and started educating the doctors i said do not give up on the subject we will educate you we will help you we will tell you we hosted conferences we wanted to tell the parents and the doctors that there was hope there was so much potential in these people but because they were not looking at the medical factors we had to tell them what was missing it le led to a change of lots of attitudes people started believing in me because i had proved a point why was this necessary it was so necessary because people with down syndrome were living longer people had always thought they will go away in the first 10 years of their life no my friends they, we have people who are 73 who are there in our center and they are amazingly beautiful and people like us so it was necessary to create a team approach now where what was this we started doing health camps we brought in doctors we brought in professionals we brought in everyone and educated them all over india we were running camps from the north to the south i have covered in the last 30 years kashmir to kanyakumari and goa to orissa so i have managed to create camps everywhere brought in doctors who are running these camps every year we have a, a health camp in all the places more importantly it was important for us at that point of time to to have knowledge on how to treat persons with down syndrome because that was an exclusive chapter it did not come under disability we tried to put down syndrome separately we needed health care providers we really needed health care providers who would be able to advise the parents advise them on what was the next test they had to do how to do it and keep the pattern going every year we had to do physical tests we had to do general ent cardiac dental endocrine because all of this matter we did not want the child to be missing out on any issue why is it that people call these people mentally challenged you know the word mentally retarded to coming today to intellectually disabled took us 20 years to change that concept they my daughter was always called mentally retarded we found it abusive then we changed it to mental disability then we changed it to mentally handicap then we said no we don't like the word handicap today we are called intellectually disabled yes we have some challenges but the challenges come by not fixing it's about fixing a person if you have a vision issue you have a hearing issue you have a thyroid issue you have a gut issue my point is that anyone anyone would feel that they can't cope up with situations so we set out this right this particular child and today they are
when so in management what did we have to do we had to start empowering doctors in villages in the in districts and we started putting together a healthcare team there was a long term plan every month or every year you have to do the complete check up of these people the collaboration happened between us and all the states there was a lot of knowledge sharing we had a lot of conferences and we had cmes which were absolutely necessary because for us a pediatrician was our first point of contact then we started with the most important thing was a conference of an international level every year so we chose places right in the middle at the heart of the uh, country where people could come 400 people would attend every year we started conferences on a large scale and it was done by the federation so people would be invited and we shared a lot of information the most important information my friends one of it was on mental illness because mental illness and persons with down syndrome there was a confusion people were not treating them they were not giving them the care that they needed so we had to work on it we had to educate the psychiatrists we had to have the clinical psychologists we got in psychotherapists who would do the complete analysis and this person was given a better quality of life we only talked about quality of life i went back to the university i told you i started studying at 55 and it wasn't easy but there's no end to learning and that's what i want to tell you students that don't stop learning on anything it is about actually you know widening your horizons and learning and learning and learning and i learned i learned so late but i wrote the books i wrote books for people so that they would understand they would be able to you know like read and connect this is my child this is the situation i need to rectify this so my books were there they're all e books by the way you can immediately download them and read them the next important thing was creating a medical panel you can run through that which was you know the most important thing is the cardiologist the endocrinologist the therapist all therapists then we needed the uh, the ent the ophthalmologist and the dentist so all of this were looked into and we tied them as a package for the children then what made me feel excited was the fact that one pediatrician who had a child had recognized that there was potential and that was what made me what i became so if i made every mother empower her make her feel that she can she will that's why i'm called ma because we are all mothers first and we sit together and we cry and we see there my friends if there's one thing in the world that cannot be handled it's about your child when you know that there is no future it is frightening you know that you are being attacked in society by so many people that mother needs to be rescued that mother needs to be consoled that mother needs to be told we are here we will help this is what it's all about you can change your jobs you can change your colleges you can change your houses people change their partners but you can't change your child how will i leave my child alone so we started empowering everybody they only needed direction this has to be done at this time yes they started doing so beautifully in art dance drama theater we were putting up plays everywhere and they are so good at music my daughter is an amazing person at dance and drama and we did definitely i mean if you look at my daughter's dance uh, videos which are there on our website you will understand that there is nothing that you can stop at she danced for 3 hours and gave her arangetram in bharatnatyam without a flaw so what was given to us as information was disproved and this is the fact of every child's life they talk they are able to go into competitions they are yoga teachers today um they they are amazing they have become teachers in schools and they are doing so well so look at the number of people who have been successful in their lives as people with down syndrome now that's my daughter and she is got a gold medal in swimming she is a national uh, recognized athlete so where was it that you were telling me that my child cannot 
So either they did not know 40 years ago, or they did not see what could happen. Now, I would like to also tell you that we had a lot of challenges, okay? It was not easy. Because first parents didn't believe, then doctors didn't believe, so we had to get people who had to travel into the interiors of every place, sit with them, counsel them. And I heard a lot of things that parents, because they're living with the in-laws, how the other family members would be treating them. We changed the entire concept. We made it sound like, yes, this is a family, the family stays together, be the caregivers, but love this person. The child does not need anything but love and care initially. It is a baby after all. So neonatal care, we started giving the support to the parents. Day one, baby is born, I am called and I travel to that place. Now my hands and legs have been actually tied and not able to travel. But I would be there physically with the parent and we would sit and discuss and we would do all our work together. There is other thing today, all over India, we have parent support groups. You know that it's not possible to speak in one language. You need different languages. 22 languages in India, official languages, we have created that all over India. We have parent support groups and identified the leaders and they will help. So financially, we are the ones who are giving the support, but the parent support groups are necessary for language. We also formed what is called a companionship for our people. The self-advocates, the older people, are craving for companionship. So we created a humsuffer group where every year we have 400 people who come together and then the children meet and the self-advocates have a fun time and the parents are also freaking out. It's really like a large holiday. The other very important thing that we started doing was, Brinda, that this is our, our, our entire team. And then we started creating sibling groups. The siblings are very important. People normally forgot the other brother or sister. So we brought them together into a very large sibling group. And from the time they are little children, we explained to them that your brother or sister would be different, but this is your brother, this is your sister. And we brought that into the family. Now, there are other things that we have done is about employment. You know, India is not an easy place. Even the educated people have no, uh, are losing their jobs. But we were very lucky. We were able to get them into hotels, into weaving, baking, theater, dance, drama, theater, everything. We have got them jobs. They are all doing very well. They're getting jobs. They're working well. They are in industries. They are in the hotel industries. So it's not as if they have been left behind. Yes, there are some things that can be a challenge. We come in, we help. The road ahead is very clear. We have created, and our desire is only to create a register. So actually, Bhopal and Madhya Pradesh was my last visit. I went to Indore and I held my health camp in Indore. And it was amazing the number of people who came together. The most important thing is to be able to give medical facilities to everyone. And we try to support them by giving them their services. If they need a surgery, the Federation immediately rolls out the money, talks to the doctors, talks to the entire medical team, and we are here. We are also fighting for their legal rights. And we are trying to get into the farthest points of the country. Now. It is important also that schools, education was our biggest challenge. Because even with the bubbly, they told me to put her in the school for blind. Now, my point is, everybody should be given a right to education. So what we do is, early intervention is over, we make it compulsory. And luckily for us, the Right to Education Act has been passed, where every child is given the right of education. So unless you really find an issue with the person, we will not allow you to stop them from entering schools. So we fight for them. We make sure that the system is in place. There are also other issues that sometimes are, we have been lucky. The government has been very, very good. And I think even Bhopal, children are going to schools and are doing quite well. There are things like immunization and uh, disease prevention. We are trying to do all of that and working towards healthcare, which is the biggest, biggest challenge.
You know something? Because we were so successful, look at that. We had people adopting children. And one of them is from Indore. Mr. Tiwari is from Indore and he's adopted the most beautiful little baby with Down syndrome. And we are, because we have proved that they have tremendous potential. So Kavita and her husband Himanshu have adopted the Veda and they are so happy with their little children. Now, what we are trying to tell you is that it has not been an easy road, but it's been a challenge which has been very fruitful, very deserving. And what we see of our children today, like I see my little 40 year old grown up into a young woman and absolutely happy running her life, doing her thing. And she wished me best of luck for today's meeting. We'd like to show you a very small movie that we have taken. We've taken lots of movies and uh, we will show you this. See it and back to you after the movie is shown for you to ask me any question you want. Thank you. Can you all see and hear? Um, Brinda, the slide is visible. Okay, the audio is not? No. You can't hear the audio? No. Oh, okay, just a moment. You can't see the audio, okay? Now, is the audio visible? No. Is the, the video is not visible. The video is not visible, ma'am? No. no. Oh, just a moment. So, we made a movie on the adult uh, 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 people with uh, uh, persons with Down syndrome. And uh, it uh, was, uh, it was, the movie was called Indelible, which won the award in Australia. Can and, you see it now? Uh, yeah, uh, let's see. Can you yeah. see and hear? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Brinda. We need volume. No volume. Is the volume loud enough? No. Is it audible? No, it's not audible. It's not audible. It's not audible? No. no. Uh, can that gentleman just tell me how to... Mr. Rathor, can you tell me how to make it audible? Ma'am, are you Ma'am, uh, you present now, pe jayenge na. you can see the entire screen, you go third wale pe jaye, present a tab. Through that, okay. when you present now, audio will be automatically, uh, you know, it will be heard. Okay. Third one. Okay, uh, like... Yeah, yeah, I got it, ma'am. I'm just trying a to... A tab, open. yeah. Best for... But, but this is... Actually, ma'am, but this is not open on a, ta uh, on a tab. I mean, it well, is open is on my uh, system. Is, yeah, that but is... But I'm not... Uh, I am not able to... Go into the. Uh, Ma'am, only select the YouTube tab. Don't select I, the entire screen. Uh, sir, actually, this is not on YouTube. This is a, a file that I have on my system. Okay. Yes, but, okay, Nishu, I, I think we can just start going ahead and asking questions till we get that rectified. Okay? Oh, sure, ma'am. So, um, meanwhile, everyone gathers the question, put them on the chat box. May I request you to educate us on, you know, we all are aspiring teachers here. So, yes, you talked about parents, the doctors, empowering each one of the segment. But I would like, you know, I there's no number to it, five tips, ten tips. Just what is coming from your heart, educate us as aspiring teachers on what all we can do, we should do, what should be our role. So educate us there also i mean i think i would personally and 
and my friends also would need this much from you yeah uh, uh actually if 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 anybody met my daughter okay let's put it in personal perspective uh it's very important that everybody treats her not like a person with a challenge or try to baby her see yes most people think that persons with down syndrome are to be treated as people who are you know like got to be protected please don't try doing that because they don't want that they want to be treated if you are looking at a 30 year old treat them like a 30 year old and it is important that you as an individual can just very simply very simply talk to them in your own language they might understand might not understand you might not understand what they are saying because sometimes language is an issue with persons with down syndrome they can be you know we have a lot of people who are non verbal also but still they will tell you what they want so if you are sitting in a group which is what they love they love your age group they love people who are their own friends they want to make friends but because people don't understand them they back off my question to you is do not do not back off they are not going to be aggressive they are not going to hurt you they just smile at you so you are the person who can create that create that friendship between or a bonding a funny bonding which says i don't care who you are i just love you and it's with your body language you know like what you have to do is come on do you, let's do this act you know what i i saw this movie it was amazing and they love movies they love theater they love actors they love all this salman khan movie so if you want to break through with a guy you talk about salman khan and say oh i saw this movie did you see it he might say yes he might say no so it's for you to first shed this inhibition that we have in our brain which says oh he is a person with challenges first he is a person second this is what i tell everyone give him a name he has a name call him by his name and say would you like to be my friend and you will be surprised what you will find they will give you a hug immediately today because we tell them not to hug they keep saying we don't know why the corona came so it's it's amazing that they don't want anything between you and them because they feel when they hug you there is a body warmth there is a certain contact but we have taught them now that they have to do namaste and stick to the namaste because this is an important part of keeping a social distance the more important thing is that when you include them in your conversations do not think that they have to understand every word you're saying sometimes like when you are talking four of you are talking and the language is a little too high for them they back off and they start going into their own world so what you have to do as intelligent adults talk in a language which is general you know i would still talk about you know the garden in my house the roses came up so beautifully oh i think it's going to rain tomorrow and i and this is where i'm going for a holiday and when you say okay what's going to happen after the lockdown is open where are we all going and yesterday when we questioned them we have a meeting for the self advocates all of them came out with i'd like to go to a restaurant and i love to order this and i would love to have a chocolate pizza everything is very clear in their heads it's about us not them so you have to break those barriers by trying to interact at a different level which is not always a very intellectual level but at the level of the person so you try to understand them try to see where your trigger point is there are trigger points in these people they will suddenly start laughing at a joke so you can understand what they are trying to say talk about basically very very general things food whether uh, going to a holiday a birthday parties these are very important things they love all of that So it's not difficult. Initial breakdown and then make it simple. The video is up, uh, visible now. So in case you want me to share it, ma'am, I can. Shall I share the video, ma'am? Yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, is it visible and audible? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. 
I am dance and drum. So what? just want our society to accept people who are labelled right through their lives. No one is perfect. We are all born with some challenges. No one likes to have a different chromosomal pattern. It just happened. If society understands that every human being has something to offer and you are there to receive, which is what is important, you have to receive because I'm offering it. Look at me as a person, try to understand me, be a little patient with me. It works both ways. It might make a change in your life as much as it makes a change in the person with Down syndrome. Give these children a chance, they are just like us. I'm done. Yeah, yeah. So, any questions? Okay, ma'am, so we have a question from uh, Shireen Robin, John. Um, this question is, how you manage the world where everyone might have looked at your child with sympathy? You are a wonderful mother and inspiration. What would you like to suggest to those parents who might feel embarrassed at times to answer the questions raised by the society? Okay, who is the society first? So, Shirin, I, I would like to ask you, who makes a society? It's us. So, imagine, uh, you know, even an educated person walking into your house, like sometimes my mother-in-law would say, let's not take bubbly for the, for the wedding because people might look at her and pass a comment. Do you know what bubbly said? People only look at beautiful people. Why are you looking at me differently? Do you think they don't have feelings? Now, my question to you is, if the world is looking at me because they are feeling sorry for me, that's their problem. I am a person, my job has only been to empower the parents. We have now 6,500 parents who feel empowered. They believe that their children are theirs. Listen, when a parent comes to me and starts crying, or says, why was I chosen? Why me? Which is a typical question. My first thing to them was, your child is looking at you and trying to understand why this mother? Because it's a two-way street. Can you imagine how the child must be feeling if you are looking at your child and you are embarrassed? Do you know how many of your parents come out with you and feel embarrassed at your behavior? I mean, I honestly, it's nothing to do with Down syndrome. It's about typical people also. I have had a lot of children who are embarrassed by their parents. And they keep saying, you stay at home. We don't want to take you out anywhere. I mean, why are we worried about what people think, what people say? Because that those same people today have rung me up and said, you are the luckiest mother. You know, their children have given them pain, have given them something to worry about, whereas Bubbly has never given me a day of any worries. So you have to look at the society and tell the society, try to answer the questions. Whenever somebody talks to me, I always say, reverse the situation and think how you would have felt if you were in my position and this same society was laughing at you or feeling sorry for you. I never asked for sympathy. 
if you can sit with me and understand what my child is about sit with me if you don't that's your society not mine yes this so called society has a different notion in their head that everything has to be perfect because they paint it perfect in their houses the number of problems they are having my friends only i know so it is every child who is born to a parent will have some issues or the other it doesn't matter you have to learn to deal with it you've got to learn to deal with society your family your your friends everyone those who love you will stay with you and i have never had societal fears never yes my daughter looked at me and said only one i never asked you for the extra chromosome i never you give us an extra chromosome and then you say that we are different we never asked you for any of these things but we love you anyhow children love you just as you are you have to love them and learn to change the opinion which i want you to do is change societal fears change the entire society that is sitting and sympathizing with people who have disabilities can i request everyone if you are comfortable please put on your video also it will like <laughs> feel that we are talking in person even if you are bed you haven't bed that's fine okay uh, ma'am i have a question here yeah ma'am i feel i agree with you here that we should not give uh, remote to our tv in others hands they should not channel us and if we do not like someone you know behavior attitude we cannot change them we should just switch off the channel and switch on to a new channel like find our own circle find good people create an environment for us likewise you have been doing but sometimes like i am a mother to a child with non disability but an aunt to a child with disability so i have seen both the kids with a difference of 2 months i seriously feel i mean irrespective of all the resources you have behind besides having good intentions people are difficult to change and i'm talking about mothers in in you know per se so it is not about a child with disability like the child my child is not getting a good friendship zone with other child because the parents never allow them to play with my child so if we are in a campus these days if we are in a society and we have that one hour of evening time my child still feel isolated he doesn't have a circle how do i educate them this is not the time like what do i educate them how do i change the mothers to make their children play with my child okay so i very simple uh, my daughter went to school i'm talking about even 40 years ago when she went to school she was about 2 and a half in spite of everybody telling her to put her into the blind school or the school for the deaf and dumb i refused i put her into a regular uh, kindergarten and uh, at that time it was considered a contagious disease by the way down syndrome was considered contagious so nobody would play with her okay and in fact because bubbly would wear those big glasses people were pushing her and taking away her glasses i would be sitting at the entrance and you know what i did i walked up to the principal and i said just give me 10 minutes during a time or session when i can talk to the parents and the teachers together now You know the problem is we don't address issues, we don't come out with it clearly. So I actually stood on the platform and I told everyone, see, it is not as if this this is a contagion, a genetic. People are not aware of the problems that other children have. So I said, if a child misbehaves in a, a playground, and even if he's neurotypical, you allow it. you don't say too much about that child you just call the parent and say you know your child misbehaved but i think you have to 